Hi everyone, welcome at the Julia conference. Today I'm going to talk about optimizing Julia code, which I find very enjoyable. Um, I have to say that I'm not an expert in this. There are many more people who know way more, but I will just tell what I learned in the last few months. And I think that it could be enjoyable to a lot of people. And sorry for my a bit scratchy voice. I'm actually having COVID, but well, that's not the topic of today. So let's talk. Um, what I want to show today is um, here on the REPL in Julia 1.8 release candidate one. Um, a few things I will activate a temporary environment bench and I will need benchmark tools version one, uh, which I now installed. And basically I want today to talk about type stability in the, in the 10 minutes that we have and um, about type stability. We, we can take one example, for example, with a dictionary. So in, we take a dictionary, we can make it and we can put uh, two types of float in there. One 32 bit float, that's the first one, that's one. So well, that's this one. And uh, another one is the 46 bit float, that is just the normal flow type basically which which is the most common used in uh, julia and now we can uh, put it in a we can create a function which which takes this and doubles the number so from this mapping which is some kind of dictionary and we take a symbol a key we can then say well return me twice what is in the dictionary so twice what is in uh, the mapping and we can now use double numbers one and we can get a two back and note that it is a 32-bit float because it was already a 32-bit float and if you then add uh, sorry multiply it by two then you get again a 32-bit float which is a julia uh, convention or implementation detail i should say and if you do it for two then we get a 46-bit float back so you see already that this is sort of weird because now our function uh, depending on what key it gets it will have a different output type that is not always a good idea and actually it will it's very easy to see this if you just use code warn type in code warn type it will show you the the typed code of julia and it will show the types which are abstract in red and abstract types are always a problem because you cannot put an abstract type in memory. For example, if you have an abstract float, well, it could be either a 32-bit or a 64-bit. So what should you put in memory for this thing? Because, it, well, it can be anything. And then usually what, what happens is that it becomes a pointer. So you just point to some memory address. But you can imagine that pointers take are less efficient than having... The, the actual object immediately available because you have to follow the pointer and that, that kind of stuff. Now, that's what you see here as well, that the code warn type, it gives quite a big error. It says, well, that, that get index that you did, so that is here mapping get index key, uh, it returns an abstract float because the dictionary contains abstract floats. It, Julia figured it out. And then this multiplication, well, that can be in any, that's basically what it says. And the output here, by the way, can change a bit depending on what Julia version you're running. But well, here in 1.8, it returns an any. <coughs> and we can check whether that's a concrete type. So float 64. Yes, that is a concrete type. But a abstract float, that is not. And yeah, well, this this is already a problem. The, the return type is an any, that's not good. But we can also create a function. I will just copy paste it, it's quicker. We can create a function use double, which now uses this previous double function and multiplies it by two and then puts it in a string. And we can use this, we can show that it works by numbers one and you get a string back of four. So it does work, but here also the code one type shows that 
that there is a problem. Because now the, the return type of the double is an any, then that multiplication that is also an that is an any, and then this string, so this, this double which goes into the string, it doesn't know what type it is. So during the running time of this function, it will need to figure out what as what specific method of string it has to call. Now, and the return time is also an any. And about this during the runtime figuring out what method to call, you can imagine that that takes time. Imagine that you have a loop of 10,000 elements and every time, every iteration of that loop, you need to figure out what method to call exactly. That's not really nice. You rather have just, you know already beforehand what method is gonna be every time. And then you can optimize uh, that. And even if the, the, the new the method which is called is very short, then the compiler will even pull in the, the method definition from the other uh, method and it will pull it in so that there is no call. Um, and that we will show as a digression now. So uh, yes, that's where we are. Um, let's, let's make a, a new example, which is much, sorry for that. Uh, which is much shorter and we can and also has very concrete types so here we we have this outer say we, we do outer two what happens now this two goes into this this function then it will go first into inner there it's multiplied by two in this inner function and then it's multiplied by three and then we get 12 as an outcome and we can show the code LLVM for this call for outer two. And what it actually shows, it says, oh wait, we, we have this inner function, which is just times two. Uh, yeah, we can just we can just pull that in because at this point it's an integer. So we know here it's an integer. We know that this is for an integer. We can just pull it in and then three times two times x. Oh, that's the same as six times x. So here it's a multiplication of the input number times six. Uh, yeah, I think that's very impressive that the compiler just compiled everything basically away what we defined and it just figured out how oh, you just multiply by six and then you have the same output. Um, so what if we would have done uh, instead a blocked outer? So we define blocked outer as uh, inner, but this time we put an inherent variable in front of it and if you don't know so we get the same output uh, 12 and that's just like with outer but if you look at the code one type of block outer gives an error because here it, it comes in and then the type is known but inside the infer after the inference barrier it's just an any so then inner it doesn't know what it gets well also the outcome is also an any therefore and then here, it, yeah, the any just keeps propagating. Um, and what is even worse, if you now look at the code LVM of blocked outer, it is not as nice as the other one was. It's just a big mess. So here, did, this was the other one, very nice and short. And this is the current one. Um, I can show these differences then with a benchmark where you just use uh, using benchmark tools. Benchmark, and then you can show that the benchmark of block outer is worse than uh, the, the benchmark on the outer, but okay, I'll skip this for time constraints. I will also skip something about type hints. You, you can imagine that adding a type hint, like uh, in a function that you would, would add the, for example, uh, inner x is of type float, you would say. Uh, that does help a bit, but it is not ideal. What is better, if, and if you go back to the original numbers example, if we can get this abstract float, if we can sort of fix that. Well, and we can actually do that if we define that type numbers to be a 46-bit float. And then uh, this 32-bit this float will automatically be promoted to a 46-bit float. Because, again, you can always add precision. Uh, that is no problem. 
And if we now use the code one type on use double with the, so again, numbers one code one type, that is pretty bad. But if you now do typed numbers, then everything is good because now it, it will uh, take in the mapping, it will take the, out, the, uh, the key and that will always be a float or sorry, in, inside the, the double function, it will just return a float and then the string, it knows on what method to dispatch and uh, everything works great. And you can actually see with, if you do this yourself, you can just run benchmark on use double typed numbers one. And well, you can also do that on the numbers version and you will see that the benchmark for the type numbers is much quicker. So that is all for today uh, that I can tell in these 10 minutes. For more details and more information about tooling and time to first X, uh, see my blog post which I wrote about this. It is a uh, sorry, it's a X location. Okay, um, thank you for your time.